Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Money Control live stream. You're watching Markets with Santo and CJ. Well, it's a week of the central bankers. You have the U.S. Fed, the European Central Bank, and the Bank of England coming out with their monetary policy decisions later this week. So, therefore, volatility is going to be the name of the game this week. And if you look at our start this morning, it seems like a very, very tentative start for the Nifty 50 uh, this morning. The SGX is indicating. More, not more than 50 to 20 point up move at this point of time. Wall Street on Friday did uh, you see another downtick because of that earnings uh, you know outlook from Federal Express, which has basically spooked investors into believing that a global recession is just around the corner. Asian markets as well, starting off on a weak note. European markets on Friday were also in the red, a sea of red. So clearly, the momentum has shifted very very rapidly, Santo, in the favor of the bears. Well, all that selective reading of uh, the central bank statements finally did not help. That's all I can say, CJ, at this point of time. It's very yeah, clear yeah. once again that at this point, uh, the central banks are hell-bent on tackling, taming inflation, mm. come what may, and that's the message. It's, I basically, think, it's basically what they say, you know, wake up, increase rates, repeat, then sleep, and then wake up again. <laughs> so I think the uh, market seems to have got the message, and that's what keeping the bulls on the back foot yeah. for now. Well, coming back to the Indian markets, I think it's now going to be a combination of technical and fundamental factors mm. at play. The market has failed to sustain about <clears throat> 18,000, so that is clearly one of the uh, one of the concerns at this point in time from a trading perspective. But that apart now, if you see uh, the, the chatter about a slowdown in the US and EU are getting stronger with the tightening of balance sheet and yeah. raising of interest rates, I don't think how things are going to get better anytime soon. So. Uh, I would say at this point, CJ, that all the negative news uh, like uh, slowdown in earnings growth here and uh, rate increases, pretty much they are discounted. At it. There's nothing mm. that we do not know. If, so the market has to go down in a big way. Probably it has to be a, some kind of risk that the market has not foreseen yet. Possibly, Santo. I think at this point of time, if you speak to technical analysts, they are clearly cautioning traders to not jump at the ne next chance to go long on this market because at this point of time, things are a little iffy. If you look at the RSI indicator, that is making a lower top on the Nifty. That basically shows that there is a big slowdown in momentum. The trending market that we were seeing has been halted in its tracks at, for, for the timing. And therefore, uh, if you see the market making one up move, don't jump on that bandwagon and try to go long on this market. Rather, be a little skeptical. Wait for the volumes as well as the, you know, the price uh, movement to happen for a couple of days to see whether a pattern is emerging or not. Because at this point of time, I think this week at least, volatility is going to be very strong. Well, the only thing uh, I could say, the slight cushion here could be the fact that maybe you could see DIs resuming their purchases mm. again. You know, They were again... Absolutely. Uh, yeah. They were selling at a time when FIs were buying aggressively and because that also seemed the smart thing to do. So mm. they have booked profits and I'm sure they would be sitting on some bit of cash, which again they can deploy should the market... Well, that's it, Sento. Let's quickly now move on to some of the stocks that we, we'll be watching out for. And the first one is actually from the mutual fund industry. Not really a mutual fund stock, it's, it's actually a play on the industry per se right. and it's our way of telling you that you can actually bet on the Indian mutual fund industry without even owning a mutual fund. Land. Well, CAMS is the first stock on a watch list this morning and as, you, as CJ here set the tone for it, it's clearly an outlook on the, it's a play on the growing interest in mutual funds hmm. uh, in the country and according to Motila Loswal, uh, the MF penetration in India is pretty low at 16% mm -hmm. and when you compare that with global standard, it's about 63%. So that's a huge gap. I'm not saying that probably we'll go from 16% to 63% in a very short time, but clearly the longer term trend seems to, uh, seems to be that you'll see more retail money coming into mutual fund, which seems to be a better way of playing the equity mm -hmm. market than putting in money directly. Yeah. That said, CAMS also has a strong leadership position. It, the uh, RTA industry is almost a duopoly at this point in yeah. time and CAMS has a 70% uh, market share in the mutual fund industry already and it has 10 of the 15 top mutual funds by AUM uh, as its major clients. This apart, uh, it's got a fairly dominant position in both the AIF as well as the PMS RTA mm. segments as well. So that's also something that is again bound to get uh, stronger in the years to come. So all set and plus, let's not forget the fact that it, it's a company with almost a 40%, 40 percent, 40 plus percent uh, operating margin and nearly a 63 percent ROE. So Impressive. everything looking pretty uh, good at this point. Of course, the story is pretty well known, CJ. Yeah, there, there's nothing new here. But all said, 
uh, the sto uh, stock is seeing some renewed interest. It's been facing a lot of resistance around the 2600 mark, but if it gets past that mark, I feel uh, this could be it could enter a breakout zone. Well, Santo, I'll be interested to see you know how the next five years uh, for the mutual fund industry in terms of AUM or average AUM growth is given that. The past five years have definitely been boosted by demonetization and a lot of other things like, you know, the market was uh, also going quite strong in the early part of this five-year period. So, therefore, a lot of factors have played uh, a hand in that. But going ahead, you know, the past two years, we have seen that trend of individuals doing it on their own self. Do it yourself has become the name of the game in the investing world. And, you know, in the U.S. Santo, when, you know, people look at U.S. and think that that is where the mutual fund industry should be. But 30 years ago, U.S. mutual fund industry was not that big a deal. It's only when you know, the government regulations came in, in in terms of 401k portfolios where you know employees were asked to put a certain percentage of their salary in a retirement fund or in a mutual fund. That is where the big leg up came. And I wonder if those sort of regulations would be required to sustain the sort of growth that we have seen in the past decade. That said, in the near term, of course, the headwinds definitely will be there. We are already seeing that there has been a these marks slow down in equity inflows to uh, you know to the uh, to equity mutual funds over the past few months and with market volatility rising and possibly you know recession talks people tend to get a little scared about the job security and stuff like that saving would probably become a more you know immediate priority than investment and i think that is where probably there could be a near term headwind as far as uh, uh, mutual fund folio growth is concerned apart from that of course if you look at technically the stock seems to be stuck in a very neutral zone at this point of time santo it's not really showing any sort of behavior either towards the upside or downside it's been for a long time it has been consolidating and i think if you're a trader you probably want to wait out to see a trend emerge and then probably bet on the stock either way whether you want to go short or you want to go long but at this point of time, I think the stock is a little too, you know, in a no man's land for me to probably go and uh, have a look at it. Well, just one quick point there, which you said about a lot of people wanting uh, to do it by themselves. That has not, I mean, there's enough study, there's enough data hmm. uh, by now, which clearly shows that uh, the, the excess of returns that you would earn by directly putting money hmm. in, a, in an index fund and what you would earn by making uh, investing directly that that's not very huge and it's always usually even the best of investors struggle to beat markets <laughs> over a long term so there's no dispute over that uh, so that is clearly one thing the second part is that a lot of money now is coming through the SIP route it's mm -hmm. not as if uh, earlier a lot of um, uh, investments would come through the lump sum route when market was rising a lot of investors would just come put in money but yeah. now that has changed the SIP route clearly that culture has again taken root yeah. so I think this is uh, something. Well, next talk on your... Well, Santo, the next talk on my radar is uh, from the oil and gas space and this is ONGC. Well, a big news came out for the oil and gas industry over the weekend with the government now slashing the excise duty or the additional excise duty or what we have been colloquially calling windfall gains taxes. Basically, has been cut very sharply for on crude, crude oil production. Now, immediately that is going to be a good trigger, a very positive trigger for ONGC and we know the stock has taken a beating ever since crude oil prices have been falling since from about $125 per barrel to about $88 per barrel at this point of time. But the interesting bit is, Santo, that, you know, CLSA, in a, in a note, they analyzed, you know, what could be the average realization post-tax, post this windfall gains tax for a company like ONGC. And they said that it would be anywhere around the range of 70 to 70, uh, $74 to $75 dollar per barrel in the past in the coming fortnight and overall they also don't expect India or like the government to make to uh, uh, make the burden so much that average realizations fall below 70 dollar per barrel that said the stock price of ONGC at this point of time is only factoring in dollar 50 per barrel realization which goes to show that the market is very very skeptical as far as earnings are concerned but analysts still feel that earnings upside for ONGC from uh, from here on is still quite massive. And this is one of the reasons why CLSA has made ONGC one of its top picks in the industry. And they believe that there is still about 40% upside in the stock over the next 12 months. So that is clearly a big word of confidence as far as CLSA is concerned. Apart from that, another set of news came in wherein ONGC has also reportedly reached out to the government and said that Maybe instead of the windfall gains tax, where you have to, you know, change it every fortnight, maybe you should look at, you know, asking us for a, a bigger dividend. Maybe we can pay out bigger dividends from the bigger profits that we are making 
and that could be utilized by the government to balance the books in terms of the fiscal deficit. So I think it's a very interesting time to go ahead for ONGC. It will be very interesting to see if the earnings also comes through in the second quarter, wherein maybe if the second quarter earnings are very strong, then market's fears around the company's EPS growth in the coming years could be assuaged. Well, CJ, this is a stock which tends to do well typically when crude prices are rising. You saw that yeah. uh, some months back. Now crude prices have come off. The second part is that the, the government policy or, or if what market sees as constant interference mm. is something that is making investors worry, not just of ONGC, but most, you know any uh, oil uh, government or oil company for that matter. So these are the two big concerns at this point in time and we are already seeing that in the price reaction. Uh, the way the stock has been underperforming ever since that. So this is not a big trigger which will fundamentally alter the outlook on the stock. Yes, the stock is definitely cheap at this point yeah, in time. It's, it's uh, quoting below its uh, book value and all that is fine. Maybe in the longer term it will it could give better returns, but in the short term very clearly it is not going to work. And uh, the last point about which you mentioned about ONGC asking the government to take more of dividends. See, that's again that's the concern that the market was having. that. Uh, public sector companies are not left with enough money for mm. capex so if you give out more by way of dividends in a way you are again uh, that will limit your ability to spend you know, on you capex know, Santo, the, the interesting thing here, here is that when this entire chatter was happening around whether the government would be imposing a windfall gains tax and all and i remember s narin who is the cio of uh, ICI the potential he had come on cnbc and had made an argument that in fact market would appreciate if the government took higher dividends then to impose a tax into in a tax intervention at this point in time because what that does is that it's you're going through a you know an efficient mechanism of uh, taking higher dividend payouts instead of intervening in the company's affairs in terms of a tax and therefore burdening not only the company but as well as the shareholders so i think of course the jury will be out which is the best way to you know probably distribute the excess profit that oil and gas companies are making, but at this point of time it seems a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel for ONGC Santo. Well, uh, Arvind Limited, the next stock on my watch list, see the stock has done well uh, for some time, but so far this year mostly it's been on a downtrend, this mm, despite the yeah. positive outlook on the <coughs> textile industry. Overall <coughs> textile stocks have done a good, uh, have the outlook there is quite positive and most textile stocks have done well, but Arvind somehow has been on a downtrend for quite yeah. some time. Now the big worry, if you look at the management commentary at the time of Q1 numbers, the Q1 top line was better than what most analysts yeah. were expecting, but then again you have pressure on the margins. The management has clearly said that the outlook on global uh, you know, exports, that, that seems a little subdued given that we are seeing strong slowdown in the US and EU. And while the dem domestic demand remains strong, uh, let's also not forget that a lot of retailers had preponed their orders mm. uh, fearing further supply chain disruption mm. so a lot of that pent up demand would also not be there and maybe that explains why the stock price is struggling i think santo if you look at uh, arvin yes the q1 numbers were quite spectacular even though the profitability was a, uh, had taken a hit and i think that part of the earnings will probably start improving here on because cotton prices have taken a knock this quarter if you look at september alone Cotton prices are down about 10.5% month on month in September and this they are expected to continue to weaken because a new supply of crop is now coming into the market and therefore that will pressure uh, the prices even more. So therefore the company will definitely see a margin uptick in the coming quarters because it's becoming more favorable for, uh, for them in terms of raw material prices. Yes, export growth or export story will probably take a beating because uh, retailers such as you know Walmart and Target who are the big buyers of you know a lot of bed uh, linen uh, bed clothing and uh, etc they are sitting on a high amount of inventory and we already know that there are concerns about recession and demand slowdown in the west so clearly the export side of the story would probably take a beating but I think the domestic side is where the support might come in because here we are entering into a busy buying season with the festive period coming up, with wedding season coming up and generally I, I would expect that domestic demand will probably try to provide some sort of support to the weakening of growth. Apart from that, the knee-jerk reaction of if any in the soft correction I think Santo would probably provide a good attractive entry point at this point of time. Well, the market has opened on a flat note there uh, but we're seeing good interest in mid and small cap stocks, 1500 stocks up and 535 down. Nifty mid cap up 0.2% but it uh, seems a bit of a struggle here for the bulls. Nifty yeah. bank is already in the red at this yeah, point. Yeah, I think Nifty has also, also slipped, slipped into the red now Santo and clearly 
it is becoming a bit of a struggle for the bulls to keep their hands on the steering wheel at this point of time if you look at the nifty mid cap as well the nifty mid cap and i believe nifty small cap as well yes both of those the nicees are now firmly in the red and if you look at some of the top losers ultra tech cementation paints tata motors are among the top losers titan hfc bank and i say say bank also rounding up the losers at this point of time santo well uh, next stock cj well santo the next stock or the last stock on my radar is mta tech yes uh, this is another stock that will probably be in the limelight today with the with the indian army now uh, notifying the def, uh, emergency defense procurement plan which will basically allow a lot of private sector companies to uh, you know provide uh, emergency supplies or uh, equipment supplies to the uh, to the defense space or to the indian army and i think uh, mtas management santo not so long ago when they were uh, on television channels business uh, television channels they had indicated that this is something that they were waiting out for because they believe that this could be a very uh, humongous opportunity for them in the very very short term of course the indigenization of the defense space is a longer term umbrella theme but within that this was serious a big uh, earnings kicker for them 20% of mtas revenues come from defense uh, uh, related uh, business so therefore clearly this could be something to watch out for in terms of eps upgrades for mtar in the coming uh, days and weeks overall if you look at mtar clearly it's a play on the you know the space uh, energy uh, space uh, area it is play on the green energy or clean energy space and it is also play on a defense so it's a three prong growth trajectory that mtar has and with the correction in the stock with the stock sitting almost 34% away from its 52 week high santo i feel that the valuation also are quite reasonable well uh, we're running out of time here but a quick uh, my counter argument on that mm. before we move on to the last stock well see there is something called buy on rumors sell on news <laughs> so defense has been quite uh, a well known story now for yeah. quite some time and maybe there's one trigger point which comes which probably uh, leads to finally all the stock prices speaking they they've had a good run almost fairly well you couldn't any more say that they are uh, not to, just talking about mtar here but in mm -hmm. general defense stock and when the sentiment for the sector itself changes probably you could see mtar also getting caught, Possibly. caught in the Possibly. down drop the last stock on our watch list this morning is uh, vedanta see the, the 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 struggle here is no longer about fundamentals now mm. the, the focus is entirely on the flip flop that we have seen <laughs> yeah. the company in february first saying that it's uh, chip for a it will not be through the listed arm then in a television uh, interview to to our own channel uh, the management said that the foray would be through the listed entity and again now it's clarified to the exchange that it will not be through the listed entity so this uncertainty well, this is something a freudian freudian slip that you did not want to make on a national television probably, probably <laughs> well that is clearly going to dampen sentiment for the stock yeah. in the short run more than any fundamentals and i think it could lead to the stock underperforming for a while you've already seen a uh, heavy unwinding of long positions mm. in the stock which is what caused the huge crash on friday yeah, absolutely, and this could because continue for some time yeah i mean if you look at if you remember santo the day the news came out the stock surged almost 10% it was almost at circuit so clearly uh, market was not unhappy that you know they had initiated those long positions hoping that wow this is going to be a new kicker for the company's earnings and clearly that has not turned out to be the case so i think therefore you are absolutely right in the near term the stock is going to suffer also the outlook as so far as the commodity side of the business is concerned is still not looking as great as a lot of people would want to be we are still hoping for signs in the second quarter earnings that you know metal producers or commodity producers will show more resili resilience in earnings as well as demand if that flows through maybe vedanta could see some revival in interest but at that, at this point of time this is one stock that probably uh, does not look to be in favor of the market well the market continues to uh, weaken the nifty now at 17500 i think we hopefully i think it looks like we'll break below the 17500 mark santo and well with that it's a wrap on this edition of market with santo and cj thank you for watching and please do post your comments in the feedback section below and as usual guys keep following us on the social media links that you can see at the bottom of your screen and for rest of your financial news stay tuned to moneycontrol.com and download the money control app we'll catch you again live at 3 pm till then have a great day